So previously, I created a drag and drop example using data types. And what I've done now is I've converted that particular sample application into using drag and drop, but using Firebase. So something slightly different, a little bit more dynamic. And I just wanted to walk you through the changes that I've made to that original project to then demonstrate the use of using dynamic data from Firebase. So this is the application running in test mode. I can just drag my staff members into this particular sort of drop target zone. And you can see that they're kind of building up quite nicely. And then all of the staff members have now been removed from the bottom panel. And of course I can drag these back in. So everything behaves exactly as the previous example. So let's now walk through the changes that I've made in this particular project. So if I just quickly hop over to uh, Firestore, you can see here that I've got some data. I've got a collection called staff and with inside there I've got three staff members. I've simply got a name and a photo URL. So nothing special can be, this could of course be not just Firebase, it could be a Superbase a database, but I just thought I'd use Firebase as something a little bit different to perhaps that I normally would have on the Academy. So here I am in Flutterflow. I've got no authentication set up. All I've simply done is I've just set up Firebase here in my project. I've connected my project up. Um, I've just got all the usual kind of setup that you would do in Firebase, but I've just kept authentication turned off. So of course, at the top of Flutterflow there, it's gonna warn me about that, but I'm not particularly too worried for this particular demonstration. So what about the changes then that I've made to this particular project? Well, if I move back over to the the actual data types there, you can see that I've removed the data types that I'm not interested in. So I'm simply not using those at all in my particular project. Now with inside the Firestore section, I've created my staff kind of schema here. And you can see here I've just got the name and the photo URL. So you just need to make sure you have that if you are using Firebase as a similar example here. Now, if I move now back over to the actual widget tree, if we look at the home page, you can see here on the right hand side, what I've done is I've converted my staff members selected and staff members available lists to now use the document because of course, because when you use Firebase with inside of Flutterflow, then those types will be available to you. And you can see here, there's just a list here. And of course the collection name is staff, which is the only collection that I've got. So no longer using the list of the data types. And I've done the same thing here for my members available. Now, other changes that I've made is in the staff component. Um, this is quite important because within our staff component, of course, originally we had a component parameter, which was our data type here, our staff data type. Now this has been changed to a staff document data type to represent what we would actually come back from our Firestore collection. So we're gonna pass a document into this particular component. And of course, I'm just gonna map that onto then the actual name itself. So you can see here that um, the name is just simply mapped onto the get document property. And of course the only property that I've got available for the name is that one there. So that's just a simple change that's been made there. And of course the UI builder says name. So that's fine. So that is just being set up there. And of course you need to also do that as well for then the, the actual visibility down here. So you can see here, this is the kind of what the component looks like. This is actually the bottom of the application. And I've done exactly the same thing there. I've just mapped that name onto that document property. So back over to the home page then. Now, of course, we've got these drag targets and we've got the, the, the two that are actually there. So because this, this has kind of got a two way kind of drag uh, sort of feature where we kind of go in this particular direction or in this particular direction. So with our drag targets, I've had to make a change here as well, because of course these are now types documents and I'm using the, the, the single one here, I've got staff. So we need to make sure we have those fully updated. And of course the same thing as well with this particular one up here, which represents the kind of the, the target sort of list that you see again, these have got documents of uh, staff as well. So they've all been updated. Of course, within the staff components themselves, of course, I've passed in the documents. So in each of the lists here, in these particular kind of list views, then of course, they're gonna kind of present to ourselves a, an, a value which you can pass actually into the component. You can see here, I've got the staff member selected item. So of course, you just need to make sure that you update that for this particular example. You can see those just down the bottom there. Now other changes that's been made as well is with inside the actions. So with inside the action blocks, we still are using this is staff in list action block because what this is simply doing, this is a reusable action that we can then frequently call from various different places within inside our application. And really all this is doing is, is passing in a list 
And you can see here, this is a type document now, which originally it was the data type with the document type down here as staff. So that's the list that I'm passing in. And of course, this one is the document in itself. And really all I'm just making, making sure we're doing here is just we're saying, is that particular document in the list that we're passing in? Of course, if it is, it returns true. If it's not, it returns false. That's important because we're using this action block with inside these particular drag target um, actions that we've got set on both of these particular widgets. Now, if I just open up one here and open that up here, then here we are calling the action block where we're finding out if our staff is in that list. And of course, we get the result back, so either true or false. And of course, if it's false, then of course, there's no staff in the list to add. So this remains exactly the same. You just need to make sure that up here, you're making changes to support the passing in of the drag data. In fact, I think if I remember rightly, I didn't need to make any changes to this once. It depends on the order that you do it, but just make sure that you've kind of got your drag data set in each of these. So those are the changes. Okay, so one just final thing to point out in this particular sample is a slight change that I've made with inside the home page itself. So this is the actions that kind of sit just here. So I'm just going to open up the action flow editor. Now in the uh, data type example, then what I'm doing is I'm kind of hard coding the values into the list themselves using data types. But here, of course, what I'm doing is I'm making that Firestore query collection. I'm just going to bring back all of the staff documents with inside that particular collection. And I've simply got an order here just to bring the back in a meaningful order. But you can see here I've got this action output variable of staff members. I'm going to kind of load this variable up with the list that comes back here from this particular query. Once I've got that, my next action is going to be, well, now I've got my list. What do I now need to set it to? So, of course, here I've got my staff members available. This is my page state variable. And all I'm simply doing is saying set value. And there is my staff members variable, which was specified just here. So I'm fully loading that list up. And once I've got that, of course, then they're all going to be loaded into this particular list list here. So just one additional thing to point out in this particular sample, of course, and how this kind of really functions if it's not being particularly clear to more sort of newcomers. You can see what I'm doing is initially is, is I'm using the uh, the power of uh, sort of fire base here where I'm kind of getting my data from that particular collection itself that I've got inside my application. What I'm doing is I'm then using local page state variables, of course, to kind of keep track of the, the list of those particular documents. So of course, in a typical application, what you would do is if you were doing this sort of thing in a more real world application, you would be manipulating data of inside these particular lists. Now, at some point, you're going to want to kind of maybe loop through those lists and then you're going to want to then do something with those items in in those particular lists themselves so it might be for example you might sort of move all of the staff members from here moving me into this particular list you might then trigger a button then you might want to then loop through those particular uh, those particular lists that you've got inside the page state variable and then maybe then insert new records or you might want to update records so you would generally use something like a loop where you would then go through and you would then uh, sort of do all of whatever you need to do inside your particular application. So please do look inside the Academy because there is a video which covers um, how to use loops within inside Flutterflow. And that would be a great uh, video for you to watch if you're looking to kind of work with the data in these type of examples. So hopefully you found that useful. It's a little bit different to use a Firestore here, but of course, if you wanted to use Superbase, then the same rules pretty well much apply. And please do check the link in the description as well, because this uh, sample will be available to you. You just need to make sure you hook that up to your uh, Firebase uh, Firestore database. So hopefully you found that useful and um, I'll see you soon.